Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of news to cover today, including some unsettling bits in the mix there, too. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star in 193 angstroms. We see bright active regions and the dark coronal hole south of the trailing region. It is indeed facing Earth this weekend. The bright areas would normally be firing solar flares, but there are not really any sunspots beneath them. The trailing region, the biggest and brightest, does indeed have two little umbra at the photosphere. I'll be watching their development today. The solar wind is calming kinetically, but magnetically in blue. The phi angle reversed and caught Earth's magnetic field off guard. No major stream means it was only a KP4 instability event, but still indicative of the magnetic change in the plasma stream. The coronal hole solar wind will arrive at Earth early to middle of next week, but the IMF and Alphan Wave earthquake risk is rising sharply now and over the next 48 hours. First time since the Hawaii quake, by the way. Moving on to a close call, 2010 WC9 is going to come half the distance between Earth and Moon, and unlike many other close calls, this one has two of the three dimensions matching our planet, at least heliographically. The heliographic latitude and longitude are exact, but it's at a slightly further out distance from the Sun when it hits that position, which means the Earth is going to come close to making an eclipse for the asteroid. Hopefully there are some little green people living on the rock to enjoy it. Up next is the latest idea on Mars, a helicopter. Before you jump to asking how that would work in 1% of Earth's atmosphere, the link to this video also contains their test in the vacuum chamber, pulled down only to Mars atmosphere density, and the thing flies. Very cool. Speaking of cool, Two huge afternoon videos this week you don't want to miss. If you think the sunspot and earth spot connections are cool, just wait until you see the Rosby wave and granule similarities. That star is just like Earth. Also, last night we dug deeper into the filament that is actually a sheet. The deeper dig was to prove that it is an electrical formation. So yeah, don't miss that. Jumping back to the little green people, the importance of seasons on Earth is becoming a focus of exoplanet hunters and astrobiologists. It's mostly been about chemistry and tides and habitable zones, but perhaps tilt is another key factor. Folks, I've had a number of emails the last day about one of NASA's lead solar physicists discussing us being overdue for a Carrington event solar flare, which would send us back to the Stone Age as a species. And to the question of why I have not shared that paper, which is actually now almost two months old in publication at AGU, it is because I showed it back in 2016 when the preprint was first released, and again when version 2 came out, and version 3. Veteran observers, you might now remember we're able to see something in the range of an X60 to X90 on the sun, with about a 150-year return pattern. It's been 159 years since the Carrington event. Yesterday, Eugene Bagashoff and Michael Claridge agreed to come back once again and speak at OTF 2019. More information is coming weekly at observatoryproject.com, and FYI, VIP tickets are about half gone. For website members at suspiciousobservers.org, it is Saturday, so our Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in a few hours and will be on our chat page around 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.